Welcome into the Bulldog Blitz. I'm Gerhard Mathingani, joined in by the head coach of the Anderson Bulldogs, Eddie Bullock. And coach, you played Fort Payne uh, to end the season off. You didn't get the, the result on the scoreboard that you wanted, but talk about some of the things you took away in the team's last performance. Well, we just played hard, uh, had a lot of fun, and I encouraged the guys to just, you know, continue to fight and do the things that we did, you mm -hmm. know, which is a trademark of ours as far as staying focused and all. And uh, we played pretty hard, but uh, Fort Payne had a – Pretty good game playing together, and uh, they ran the ball well, and, uh, you know, they just outplayed us. Uh, well, it seems like Fort Payne and, and you guys are kind of in the same position where a, a lot of talent and, and really starting to put it together to here towards the end of the season. They had a big win over Pell City last week and then, and then a win on Friday night. Talk about the two teams as, as you guys played, re really for pride and also to, to send the seniors off on a good note at the same time kind of look forward to the next season? Well, you know, Coach Ellis, he remembered us from last year. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, he actually kind of snuck out with a win last year. Right. And, uh, you know, basically he told me he was a little bit worried about us because of our speed and, uh, you know, how hard we fight. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, they were a little bit better prepared for us this year. You know, they, they weren't at, 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 as much as – talented as they were last year, right. but they, they actually played well together, mm -hmm. you know, and they did a pretty good job, yeah. You schedule these games because they're, they're tough games and they're, they're, they're games that can prepare you for the playoffs, but they're also games that it's just good competition for your players to see, and I'm pretty sure he sees it the exact same way. That's the reason why uh, he's put you guys on the schedule for the last few years. Is, is what you saw out of Fort Payne the other day kind of, uh, kind of a stirring what you think will come as, as they progress forward? Absolutely. They are, uh, you know, they kind of going through some of the same things that we went through this year, you know, playing down and actually uh, the last two games were their first two wins, mm -hmm. you know, and he was he was actually, like I said, he was afraid that, you know, he may only finish the season with one <laughs> win. Right. And, uh, you know, we were just glad to get together and play a tough football game. And, uh, you know, he's a friend of mine. So mm -hmm. just glad to play a tough ball game and uh, just get ready for next year. You two have a history with each other. You coached in the All-Star game together uh, right. back in the day. And then and, and now you're, your, your teams are getting ready to, to play each other, you know, kind of on a year-in, year-out basis and, and, and be a good test for, for one another. Was anything that they did dissimilar to what they had done previously? Well, they actually ran the, – the playbook was a little less than uh, last year. They basically ran, uh, you know, a couple of uh, GT plays, you know, where they pulled a guard and a tackle mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, quarterback traps. And they tried a couple of reverses and all, but we were pretty much tuned in to those uh, – we just had a couple of situations where we would get them in third and long and uh, we would have maybe a busted coverage in the secondary or something. We knew they were going to throw the ball on third and long, but right. we would have a busted coverage. And, uh, you know, if you just keep letting them nickel and dime you a little bit like that, it comes back to get you. And, they, and I think they just wore us down, you know, wore the defense down. And, right. Uh, we were not able to recover from it. Right, right. Coming up next year on the Bulldog Blitz, we'll have first half highlights with Coach Bullock and we'll also take a look ahead. 2017 season. All that and much more next here on the Bulldog Blitz. <laughs> Anderson traveling to Fort Payne. First half highlights here. Coach, talk about some of the things you wanted to see in this first half. Your team has fought really hard all season long and played well in these first two quarters. Well, we just basically wanted to get off to a good start. We wanted to toss and we wanted to defer. And uh, we actually, I uh, was playing pretty solid defense. And uh, what ended up happening was we started getting some of our, uh, blowing some defensive assignments. We started getting uh, linebackers and defensive linemen into the same gap. And, you know, Fort Payne was a little bit, you know, wise to it. And they were able to, uh, you know, take advantage of it and make one cut. Uh, two here and there, and uh, we're able to score. But as you can see, uh, you know, they scored on us. They had a long, methodical drive, and then we came back, and uh, we actually scored on them and tied the score up. But uh, once again, right here, you see them catching a long pass. We uh, blew an assignment there. It was third and long, and uh, yeah, we had a chance to make them punt the football, but we uh, 
blew an assignment and we just uh, we just kept making mistakes, you know, uh, defensively. Uh, right here you can see uh, uh, Rio Dobbins make a good throw to Jamar West and uh, he makes a good run, good cut. Uh, they scored on us the uh, first two drives and uh, we scored on them the first two mm -hmm. drives. We came back and scored and uh, we mishandled the snap and uh, ended up missing the uh, PAT. <clears throat> now we came back here again and uh, <clears throat> we had a busted coverage here. The uh, cornerback got caught looking in the backfield and I uh, was third and long and he let the uh, he let the uh, receiver get behind him, and uh, we just kept, you know, taking turns one play here that we kept getting out of our uh, gap assignments. We, uh, you know, kept blowing assignments, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, Fort Payne was smart enough and they were disciplined enough to take advantage of. You know, third and long right there, and we gave up a quick slant. You know, which he caught the ball and actually yards after the catch, he was able to run for the uh, extra yardage. So we. Uh, you know, we just kind of kept getting out of our gap, and uh, Fort Payne sort of took advantage of it. And uh, you know, at halftime, they ended up, uh, I think, leading us 28 to 13. And uh, you know, we wanted to make the adjustments to come back out and try to do the things that we need to do to correct it. Absolutely. Then you see your score at halftime, 28-13. Uh, but coach has kind of been this way, really, I guess, since the beginning, where where you guys kind of trade haymakers. You, you know, you go, right. you go back for back, and 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 early on, it seems like it is it's it's really a tough uh, contested game, and it's really you take a handful of plays here and there that that lead to other scores, and it's not really as indicative the right. scoreboard as it really is as far as the way the game plays out. Well, I told my team, you know, that the, we were very much similar as far as uh, talent-wise. Mm -hmm. You know, I felt like we were a little bit more athletic than they were, and I felt like we were definitely faster than they were. Right. But I told my guys that the team that was the most disciplined would be the team that would win the game, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, it proved to be true because Fort Payne was a little bit more di disciplined than we were. Right. And, you know, those one or two mistakes, you know, each series uh, began to mount up and mm -hmm. it cost us. Right. This is the last time that you'll talk to your football team at halftime, this is. The last time you'll talk to them while they're in uniform and they're about to go out and play again when, when you're at the, the break there. What's the message to the team knowing that you have two more quarters and you're really talking to your seniors for your last time in game all together? You're talking to some of your younger guys as well. Is that message any different than it is maybe game three? Not really. We just talked about being a little bit more disciplined because we really, really wanted to win the game. Right. We wanted to go out on top. And, uh, you know, we just talked about what we were doing wrong, mm -hmm. you know, that was allowing them to be able to move the football ball and, and keep the chains moving and uh, you know we actually walked outside and we physically lined up to take them through because we had some guys that just basically didn't understand <clears throat> gap integrity right and so uh, you know that's that's all we did we, you know we were playing hard we were very positive but you know we were just you know when you got 11 guys out there, you know, and you start rotating guys, taking mm -hmm. a play off or, or not doing an assignment, right. it adds up. Absolutely. Uh, film is one thing, and then when you get on the field, something completely different as far as size and being able to kind of gauge how big they are and all that kind of stuff. Talk us about talk about what Fort Payne looked like when you saw them on the field. Well, they actually had a couple of guys that were, you know, a lot bigger than we thought they mm -hmm. were on film. And then, then, of course, the offensive line. You know, we knew they had uh, some new guys on the offensive line, but they were uh, more disciplined and a little bit bigger than we thought they were. You know, a lot of times it's not about the size. It's about, you know, how smart you are and, and if you're able to pick up mm -hmm. blitzes and if you're able to turn that guy the right way. And Fort Payne is uh, excellent at that. The offensive line coach, uh, which Coach Ellis also coached offensive line, they mm – -hmm. They're extremely good at getting those guys to get, you know, do the footwork right and get them in the right position. With it being your last two quarters as well, was there anything different that you wanted to see in the second half? Maybe as far as play calling goes or anything like that, or did you kind of want to execute the things that you wanted to do in the first half? I just wanted to play hard. You know, we, we had a simple game plan, and we just really wanted to play hard. Uh, you know, we wanted to try to run the football as much as we could and, uh, you know, put it in there when we had to. And, uh you know, we were able to do that. You know, we, we had a few unsuccessful situations, but, mm -hmm. you know, we were able to, for the most part, to do what we wanted to do. Absolutely. The Anderson Marching Band has been entertaining all season long. They had their final performance against Fort Payne on Friday night. You'll hear them as we go to break. We'll be back with second half highlights here on the Bulldog Blitz.
Second half highlights here. Coach, you got the ball to start the second half. Talk about what you wanted to see here in this third quarter. Well, we wanted to come out and drive the ball down the uh, field and score and, you know, kind of close the gap. And we actually did. We drove the ball down, uh, got inside the red zone right there. You can see Mario Dobbins makes a great run. And, uh, you know, we got the ball. Uh, that's uh, J.B. Carlisle, freshman. Uh, he uh, makes a good run. We come back and... Uh, Right here, he gets it again and get to the outside. Uh, <clears throat> he's going to be a good player for us. Uh, you know, he's a freshman, and uh, you know we're just moving the football. And uh, came around right here. Uh, Jeremy McCann makes a great run. Uh, we had to kind of get him to go back again. He twisted his ankle. And uh, right there, you can see we were inside the uh, red zone. Actually, we went, uh, I, I want to believe, inside the 15-yard line. And we ran the veer, and uh, you know we went from uh, actually scoring on them to uh, Rio fumbling the football. And it was sort of unfortunate because they came right back and then a couple of plays that, you know, they uh, scored on us. Right there you see Derek McEldry, uh, he's covering the quick slant right there. He makes a great play. And right there we, they ran a reverse on us and uh, we had Jaden Woods who's outside linebacker. He's a sophomore, uh, you know, just being sound, you know, uh, he was supposed to go top shoulder and uh, keep everything inside, but he actually uh, went down on the inside, and of course it allowed a Fort Payne opportunity to score. Uh, we came right back here and we hit uh, C.J. Ramsey uh, with a uh, post play across the middle, and uh, he actually makes a great catch, so we went back to him again on a quick slant, and uh, he got his hands on the football and tipped it, and Fort Payne ended up intercepting the football. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there again, we had a situation where he, uh, uh, they came down on us and uh, ended up punching it in the end zone on a uh, power play scoring. And uh, so you're looking at back-to-back -back touchdowns that we gave up right there, and, you know, within that third quarter. And, uh, of course, we came back here, we ran a slip screen, and, uh, we actually ran it to the wrong side. Uh, West, uh, Jamar West was not expecting the football. And uh, Rio Dobbins, uh, he actually threw it to the left side when the play was designed to go to the right. And uh, Fort Payne intercepted that pass and uh, ended up turning it into a touchdown. And, uh, you know, just, just a couple of, you know, mishaps on offense here and then and a couple of mishaps on defense and uh, just kind of hurt us there. Right. And, uh, we came back right here and we ran, uh, we ran uh, GT to Jeremy McCants right there. And you can see he ran it pretty hard. And, uh, you know, we got a lot of yards out. And, of course, he played the second half. He hurt his ankle. He mm -hmm. yeah, rolled his ankle a little bit. And, um, you know, but he came back and ran the football pretty hard. Right. And, and him rolling his ankle is it's kind of a, it's a snowball effect, really, of what this season has become. And, and, and I know that we've talked about this before, but, I mean, injuries have played such a, a large part right. of, of this season. As you take a look back at it now and, and be seeing it from, from the vantage point that you have now, I mean, injuries had had to play such a huge, huge role in the way the season shook out. Well, it does, and that's, that's part of football. You know, we had several guys, and we weren't sure even the second half if he would be able to go. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, because we didn't know. The play right before halftime, we ran a little shuffle pass to him, and he kind of got rolled up on that in the line of scrimmage and you know we was unsure whether or not he would be able to go and mm -hmm. uh you know i talked to him and you know he told me that he basically could go you know he was a little skeptical about going and uh but you know any any event he he went on and played and mm -hmm. ran the football harder he was running the ball well the first half so right you know and, and he was the only running back basically that we had senior wise because right. lj hurt was out yeah and lj Hurd was the the leading rusher going into this football game whether it's the, the end of the season, the state championship, or it's, it's week 10, every coach addresses their team for the final time after, after, the, after the season ends. What was the message to the team after you, um, you got, got a chance to all corral them? And obviously they're disappointed with the loss, but what was the message to the team as you uh, kind of broke down Friday night? Well, I just, uh, the message I gave them was extremely short and sweet. You know, I, t I thank them for all that they have done for mm -hmm. us. And, uh, I told them how much I appreciated, you know, them having a positive attitude. Uh, 
you know, words can't express how positive they were. You know, we were, you know, two and seven maybe going into that game, mm -hmm. and uh, the season hadn't turned out anything like we expected. Mm -hmm. You know, we actually thought we we would probably be eight and two maybe right. at the most, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, but they were extremely positive, and uh, I told them that uh, I wanted to thank them. You know, I, I couldn't express, you know, in words how much I appreciated you know, how positive they were mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, how hard they fought. And uh, basically that was it because I, I addressed them that Thursday after we did our walkthrough mm -hmm. and I told them that I wouldn't hold them long that Friday, you know, if they had anything to say, you know, I right. would let them say it. So it, it was just short and sweet and, uh, you know, just uh, I pointed out some of the good things that they did and that was basically it. Absolutely. You were a great high school player, ended up also playing in college, one of the few players, uh, less than 1% actually gets to go to college and, and play, whether it's on Division three or Division one level. You were able to do that. A lot of the, the kids that you've coached, a lot of kids that, that you've been around will not have that chance. But you know that a lot of the life lessons that they learned as a football player at Anderson High School will take them a long way. Talk about some of the things that you know that they'll glean, but maybe they don't know right now, but they'll figure it out over the next 20 years. Well, the biggest thing I think is uh, fighting through adversity. Mm -hmm. You know, I told them, I said, it's, it's not easy when you only won one or maybe two games, you know, and then you're listening at your fans and you're listening at your uh, family at home. You mm -hmm. know, I had one of my players said it. He told me, he said, Coach, you don't know how hard my family get on to me when I go home after a loss, you know. And I basically told him, I said, it only makes you stronger because y'all get a fraction of what I get all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, I said, uh, basically, you're going to be judged every Friday night on that score. Mm -hmm. they, you know, the, the fans and the family don't look at the time that you put in during mm -hmm. the summer, preparing, lifting weights, getting up at 6 o'clock in the morning and running and you know, trying to do a balance act between your grades and, uh, you know, your school work once you get in school. And then, of course, we got some that work. And uh, I told them, I said, once you get uh, grown and get in the real world, you will actually see that, you know, you don't have a choice. Right. If, if you don't make it balanced or you don't do the things that you need to do, uh, you'll find yourself in difficult, you know, just find difficulties mm -hmm. in living and making mm -hmm. it in life. So... You know, I felt like this season, as far as teaching the kids how to fight through adversity, probably was the best season. And I've been at Anderson 17 years. And, right. And you know, I've been through good seasons, and I've even been through bad seasons with other coaches. But mm -hmm. I think this particular year, even though it didn't show it on the, on the, as far as wins and losses, I, I really feel like that we uh, taught the kids a great deal about, you know, facing – you know, situations in life. Absolutely, and that positive attitude will go a long, long way in their future. Speaking of the future, the 2017 season will be here before we know it. We'll talk about that, say goodbye to the seniors, the class of 2017, all that and more is next on the Bulldog Blitz. Final segment here on the Bulldog Blitz. First off, Coach, we'll, we'll get into the future in just a bit with the offseason training and some of the other sports that you that you take care of. But first, uh, we'll have to say goodbye to our senior class like we do every year uh, on this part of the show. Every year there's a senior class that comes through, and, and every year they end up graduating and, and you welcome in a new team. These are your seniors that you'll depart for the 2016 team. Talk about some of these guys. Well, toughest thing to do is to let go of them, you know. Have Mario Dobbins. Uh, we asked a lot of him, and he did a great job. Uh, had him for four years, and of course we got Derek McEather. He played cornerback for us, his first year playing, mm -hmm. and uh, you know we glad to have him out. And of course, Quintavious Gordon uh, played three years with us, played his freshman and his sophomore year, and he ended up not playing his junior year. And we got him back the senior year. Mm -hmm. and of course, Jeremy McCants, you know, was running back. We had him for two years. Uh, he was actually an eligible one year for, uh, due to transfer rules, and. Tariq played a couple of years with us. Uh, Torian Sizemore, we had him for four years, and uh, he did a fantastic job mm -hmm. this year leading us in receiving. Uh, Juan Rodriguez, first year playing, he was a kicker for us. And Cassius Carter was uh, one of the players we had for four years. Uh, he did an outstanding job, and I have a lot of respect for him because he actually supposed to have surgery on his shoulder mm -hmm. at the beginning of the season, but right. he, he finished up and did well. L.J. Hurd was our leading rusher. We didn't have him for the last three games. And uh, 
Omar Williams, this kid right here, played four years for us. Mm -hmm. uh, he was the, probably the smartest player on the team. Uh, he'll end up getting an academic scholarship, made 26 on his ACT. Mm -hmm. And uh, Antonio Bell, we had him for uh, two years. He uh, played his uh, freshman year, and uh, he ended up not playing for us a couple of years and came back. And then, of course, D'Angelo McElderry, uh, was probably our greatest leader on the team. Uh, we call him Steel. I <laughs> believe his life calling is being a comedian, but <laughs> he kept the team happy, uh, showed great leadership, and uh, he just, you know, kept our spirits up. Uh, best offensive lineman that we had. He could play any position and played a little defense for us, too. And then, of course, we had a Landon Keenan. Uh, it was his first year playing. He was a senior, and uh, we got him out to play a little defensive end, but mm -hmm. first year playing, and uh, you know, I'm just proud of all the singers. And, you know, of course, as I mentioned earlier, it's, it, the toughest thing is, is letting those guys go because you get attached to them. Absolutely. A great job by the senior class, really patching together and, and being the leaders that this team needed as they move forward. Now we look forward to next year, some of your sophomores and juniors that will come up. Let's talk about some of the, the athletes to watch as you go through your offseason training and then go into spring football. Well, you know, you mentioned sophomores and juniors, but actually it's the freshmen. It's freshmen, too, because you had to play a lot yeah, of them this right. year. Right. <laughs> we, we started seven freshmen. Uh, we, of course, we got J.B. Carlisle. Uh, he plays running back. Uh, we got Khalil Peoples, a uh, freshman, played defensive end, started. We got Caleb Jennings. Uh, he played linebacker. Mm -hmm. He'll probably be Mike Linebacker next, next year as a, a sophomore. And then, of course, we had uh, – uh, two sophomores, uh, DJ Finley, and we had uh, Quintavious Cup on uh, offense, uh, played offensive line, and then uh, we got uh, Sharia Brown, sophomore that played cornerback. Mm -hmm. uh, so we just had several sophomores. We had James Haynes, uh, who was a junior. He's one of the few juniors that played cornerback. Right. Uh, we got Kalik Brown, who's a freshman that played some cornerback. Uh, and we had uh, Jaden Woods, a mm -hmm. sophomore that played outside linebacker. So we we pretty much getting young guys back. You know? Right. Uh, you wear many hats. You're the head coach of the basketball, t uh, the girls basketball team, the head coach of the football team, also the AD. Quickly talk about some of the things that lies in store for for you and this athletic program moving forward. Well, just transitioning over now. You know, closing out the football season and uh, you know getting the basketball season rolling. Uh, you know, I had the girls prepared. You know for three, maybe four weeks down the road because, you know, every year with football, we're always playing for the playoffs, and uh, we try to schedule late in November, uh, you know, do the football. Right. But, uh, you know, I told them, I said, it's kind of bittersweet. You know, I'm, I'm kind of glad to get rolling with y'all, but I'm kind of sad that we're not doing what we need to do in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, you just, just transition over, but I've been doing it for, you know, 11 years. So, it's, it's you know, actually, I was coaching the boys before, that so it, it, it's not a big transition for me. I mean, it's it's an everyday thing for me. And quickly, when do you start girls basketball, sir? When do you start girls basketball season? Uh, we start the fifteenth of November. Okay, good deal, good deal. And girls basketball is fantastic in the county. Fantastic as they move forward. And I know that you're excited about a new football season. I'm sorry, a new basketball season with a new right. boys coach as well. Well, we have Coach Brown or Tory Brown. He transferred in from uh, uh, Shelby County. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's a graduate from Anniston, you know, and uh, he's actually one of my football coaches. He coaches the wide receivers. So, you know, we've both been kind of doing the same thing, and, you know, we got a pretty tight bond. Uh, you know, basically we have about 25, maybe 30 football players that mm -hmm. play basketball. So we're looking forward to it. And, then, you know, we, we just tying everything together. You know, right. we, we have a plan for about the next two or three years as far as how we're going to do it. And I think – He'll do a great job. You know, he's, he's very conscientious about what he's doing, uh, very energetic, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, he, he loves what he's doing, and, and he's an alum not just like I am. Mm -hmm. You know, I believe Tori graduated maybe in 98, somewhere in 97. Right. And, uh, you know, just looking forward to getting him rolling, and, you know, we travel together in football, we're going to travel together in basketball. Absolutely. Brighter days are ahead for the Anderson High School program. Thank you so much, Coach, for joining us each and every week. Thank you as well for joining us each and every week here on the Bulldog Blitz. We will we'll see you next season, 2017, right here. Goodbye.